in this video we're going to set up blogging using Total CMS. As you can see here on rapidweaverblog.com on the articles page, which is the home page, we have a list of all of our blog posts. When we click on one of those, we get the individual article page with the content and the image gallery and comments. So what we're going to do, as I said in this video, is look at how we set up this. But not only the front end, also the admin back end for adding and editing posts. But before we do that, what I'm actually going to do is log into my FTP server and delete everything that's on rapidweaverblog.com and start afresh. So I'm going to open up my FTP server. I've already logged in and I've got my rapidweaverblog.com files here. All I'm going to do is delete those. Once those are gone, if we go back and refresh Rapid Weaver Blog, you'll see that nothing is actually there. And we refresh Rapid Weaver Blog, we'll get a forbidden message. And that's because we haven't got any content on the web server. So let's open up Rapid Weaver. And I've got my Rapid Weaver project file open that we showed in the previous video. I have also already set up my publishing details here. So what I'm going to do is just republish all these files from this project to the server. And once that's done, if we go back and refresh, you'll see we get that home page with the blank content or a blank page. And that's obviously because we haven't added any content yet. So as I said, what we're going to do in this video now is start adding our online blog using Total CMS. So we'll go back to Rapid Weaver and what I've done here inside of my stacks library is added two folders. The first one is all of the foundation stacks and the second one is all of the total CMS stacks. And this is just so I've got easy access to all of the stacks I need for the remainder of this course. So to get started, you're probably thinking that you want to start adding some blog post or some content to the homepage. But what we're actually going to do is set up the admin area for our blog. So I'm going to add a new page, go up and click the plus and select stacks. And what I'm going to call this is articles. Now this is going to be the admin page for our blog post articles. So what I'm going to do in the page inspector is set the folder name to actually be admin forward slash articles. And then I'm going to change the file name to be index.php. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is add the admin core stack from Total CMS. Now this is required on all of the admin pages for your site. We're going to look later on at how we add this to a partial so that we can share the styling across all of the pages. Now once you've added the admin core to your page, you'll see that you've got no license defined and our CMS isn't going to work after the trial expired. So if you've purchased a copy of Total CMS, you can go to the settings for the stack and you can enter your license code here. I'm going to do that now. Once you've done that, you'll see that the message or the notice that there isn't a license disappears. So next what we want to do is add the blog admin stacks to the page. Now, before we go any further, I actually want to point out that you'll see Total CMS comes with two different types of stacks. You'll see we get the Total CMS admin stacks, which have this kind of orange gradient in the background. And then we have the Total CMS content stacks, which has a white background. Now the content stacks are the ones that we're going to use to display the content on the front end. And the admin stacks are the ones that you use in your admin back end. So it's important not to get these two mixed up because the admin stacks are the ones that are used to create or edit content. And as I say, the content stacks are used to display that content to your visitors. So what we want to add to our page, first of all, is a blog list, because this is going to, on the articles admin page, list all of our articles here. So we're going to drag and drop that in there. And you'll see that we get some placeholder content below. And if you saw the previous video, you'll see that I had a list of blog posts that look familiar or look similar to this here. Now the first thing you want to do when you add any type of admin stack is ensure that you give it a unique CMS ID. 
So you'll see in the page inspector for the stack settings, on the total admin general setup, you have a CMS ID here. Now this should be unique for each admin stack. What we're going to call this is articles. Then I'm going to leave the rest of these settings as the defaults for now. We'll come back and have a look at those later. And that is essentially all we need to do to list all the blog posts for our site. But this is obviously not very useful at the moment because we don't have any posts in our blog. So when we go and publish this or preview it online, it's going to be totally empty. So what we want to do is also create a admin page for adding or editing articles. So to do that, we're going to add another new page. And we're going to add a stacks page again. And this time we're going to call it article. And again, what I'm going to do before we do anything else is go to the general settings in the page inspector and change the folder name to be admin slash articles slash article. Like so. Then again on this page what we need to do is add the admin core. Now as I mentioned a minute ago, what we're going to want to do is create a partial for this admin core because again you're seeing that there's no license defined. Now because we've already added our license to the articles page here, what we don't want to be doing is duplicating that and having to do it on every page. This is going to get repetitive and also if we change any of these admin element colors, those aren't going to be replicated on all of the pages. So I'm going to delete this admin core and what I'm going to do is go back to articles and create a partial from this admin core stack. So to do that, select the admin core and press the partial button here. Then we're going to give it a name of admin core and click the back button. Now when we go to the article page, if we go to the partial section of our stacks library, you'll see we have admin core here. Now when we add that to our articles page, you'll see that we don't get the warning that we haven't entered a license. And that's because this stack is now being shared across these two pages. Okay, once you've done that, we can now start using Total CMS to build the edit page for all of the individual articles on our blog. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, we're going to be using Foundation to lay out our site and design our site. So, as I, as I said, we've got this Foundation folder here, and we're going to be using all of these stacks for the layout, so columns and headers and things like that. So, what I'm going to do first of all is add a two-column Foundation stack to the page. When I do this, you'll see that we need to add the site style stack for foundation. And that one is the site style stack here. However, on the home page, you'll see that I've already set up the site styles. So what we're going to do is create a partial for the site style stack so that we can share that across all of the pages on our site. So select site styles from the home page and click the partial button. And we're going to give this a name of site styles, like so, and then click the back button. Now what I'm also going to do is put the top bar into the site styles uh, partial so that the menu or the navigation for our site is shared across all of our pages as well. So to do that, select the top bar stack, press command X on your keyboard, double click to go into the site styles partial, and then paste that in below, like so. Okay, now if we go to the article page, you'll see we need to add that site style stack. And we're going to do that by using the site styles partial here. That will add the site styles and the navigation to this page. And you'll see that the warning then disappears from the two column foundation stack. Now if you're not using foundation, Obviously, you won't need to create those partials. However, as I mentioned in the first video, I am using foundation for this whole course. So we're going to be doing a few foundation specific things. 
Uh, if you're not using foundation, then you can just skip over those and apply the rest of this to whichever theme or framework that you're using inside of Rapid Weaver. Okay, once you've got all of those set up, I'm just going to hide a couple of these to save a bit of space. And now we have our two column foundation layout that we're going to be using. If you remember in the first video, we had that two column layout for the individual article editing page. So we had all of the main content on the left, and then we had some metadata such as the author categories and tags and things like that on the right hand side. So let's look at how we can create that now. So let's go to the total CMS um, folder in the stacks library. And the first thing we're going to want to add is actually the blog form. So this is the form for adding or editing blog posts. So drag that into your page. And what we're going to want to do is actually put the two column foundation stack inside of the blog form here. Now by default, the blog form adds the blog permalink to the page. So a blog permalink is the URL that's going to be used for this page. So when you create something like my first blog post, that will automatically be used as the permalink or the page URL. So that is required to be added to the blog form. And that's why it's there by default. What I'm going to do is drag and drop that into the left hand side here. Then what we're going to do is add a header for the title. So this is going to act as a form label, if you like, or a header for the title text box. So I'm going to add the header foundation stack and then change that to be title. Then what we want to do is click the plus button with inside the blog form stack to add the blog title. That will add it below our two column foundation stack. And what we'll do is we'll just drag and drop that in below the header there. Next, what we want to do is add the summary. So I'm going to duplicate this header stack by selecting it and then holding down the Alt key and dragging it below the permalink. And as I say, this will be the summary. And then what we need to do is click the plus button here and choose blog summary and drag that in below the summary title. Finally, we'll do the same for the blog content. So I'll duplicate the summary title, say content, and then add the blog content stack here and drag and drop that in. Finally, what I'm going to add is a blog button. So I'm going to open that up here and choose blog button and drag that in below the content. Okay, so before we go any further, what I want to do is preview this. So you can either use Rapid Weaver's built-in preview or you can press Command P on your keyboard. That will open up your site inside of Safari. And here you'll see we're starting to build up that form that we saw in the first post. So we've got the title, summary, and content alongside a save button. What we don't have yet is that right-hand side with the author, categories, tags, images, and stuff like that. We're gonna start building that in just a second. However, I just wanted to show you quickly what we're starting to build up here and how flexible and powerful Total CMS can be, especially when used in combination with something like Foundation. Because Foundation is so flexible, we can build up these admin pages in any way we like. Currently, we have a two column layout. However, this uh, left-hand column could be the full width of the page or you could split the title to be in the right hand side. You know, you can lay out your editing area in any way that you like. And that's the power of using Total CMS with something like Foundation. However, having said that, let's go back to Rapid Weaver and start adding those final blog editing form fields that we need for things like the author. Okay, so down here, what we're going to do is Firstly, add the blog date. So click the plus button, choose blog date, and we're gonna drag that into the right-hand side. Then we're going to add the blog author. And drag that in below the date. Then what we also want is the blog draft. So this is a toggle field, as you can see. And then we want the blog featured, which is also a toggle field. 
and then quickly we want the blog categories and the blog tags and finally what we want is the blog gallery so this is where we would add images to our blog post and we'll drag that in below the tags there okay if we go back to Safari and preview that you'll see we now have all of the fields required for a blog post what we're going to need to do is obviously lay out this right hand side a little bit nicer and add some labels or titles above each uh, form field so that we know what we're editing or we know what we're changing and to do that what I'm actually going to do is put all of these right hand side blog form fields inside of a panel now the panel is a foundation specific uh, stack so we can find it in here at the top here we'll drag and drop in a panel and then what we want is as I said the headers and things like that for each one of these posts so I'm going to duplicate a few of these headers into here now first of all at the very top I'm going to have a metadata header and actually before I go any further I'm going to change the coloring of this panel I want a white background so I'm going to set the style to be custom and I'm going to set the color to be white okay there you'll see we get that nice white background and what I want is round corners and I don't want a border okay next if you remember from the very first video what we actually had in this right hand side was a two column layout for the date and the author and the um, toggles for whether it was a draft post and a featured post so to do that I'm just going to use the foundation two column stack drag and drop that in and pop the date on the left and the author on the right and draft underneath the date and featured underneath the author then what I'm going to do is duplicate this header in above each one of these form fields so the first one here was the date and what I'm going to do is change this to be an H6 like so and I'm going to set the font to be the text family and that's so that it's not bold like all the other headers just to reduce the size and, and make it a little bit nicer then I'm going to duplicate that header in above the author change the text to be author and do the same for the draft and the featured so here we're going to call this one draft and featured and before we do any more let's go back to Safari and just preview how that looks and there you can start to see how we're building up a custom admin area for our articles so you can see we now have that right hand sidebar with a nice two column layout all we need to do is finish up the category tags and the blog post gallery as well so let's do that quickly inside of Rapid Weaver so we're going to add the categories on the left hand side and the tags on the right and just duplicate those headers so this one will say category and then we'll just finally do the tags like so and then we'll drop in the uh, blog gallery in below that there and all I need is a header so I'm going to duplicate a header again there and call this gallery and what we also had was a divider so I'm going to use the foundation divider stack and just drop that in there let's go to Safari and preview that and there you can see we're, we're getting there we're, we're almost where we were with the live site all we need to do is fix up these draft and featured uh, toggles so let's go back and what we had was the alignment on the left and we also had the type was round I believe so uh, no it was radius so let's choose radius for those and we'll preview that and there you can see we've got those nice toggles as well okay and then finally what we want to do is adjust the column layout and give this a little bit of padding so back to rapid weaver select the two column foundation stack and what we're going to do is set the row padding to be five rems on the top and the bottom now if you're not sure what rems are or 
Again, if you are unsure of any of these foundation specific things I'm doing, please check out the dedicated Rapid Weaver Foundation course we have available as that will walk you through all of the different settings and options and how to build a responsive website using foundation. Okay, and then next what we want to do is change the column layout. So we want the left hand column to be wider than the right. So to do that, we'll scroll down a bit more. And on the define tablet settings, we're gonna make column one to be eight columns and column two to be four. Okay, let's go back to Safari and preview that. And there you can see we're pretty much where we were at with the live website. We're missing the admin navigation bar. We'll add that later on in the course. But for now, this is looking pretty good. We've got all of our fields that are required. So title, summary, content, date, author, draft and featured, and category tags and the gallery. So that's all of the information that needs to be added to a blog post can now be done on this individual article editing page. Now the final thing we need to do, and this is extremely important to get correct, is to ensure that the blog form is using the correct total CMS ID. So select the blog form stack, and then in the settings here you'll see CMS ID. Now by default, all of the total CMS stacks that you add are given the ID of total CMS. As I mentioned earlier, when we set up the articles page, you need to give this a unique ID. And the ID that we used was, if we choose the blog list here, we set that as articles. So what we need to do is ensure that this blog form has the same ID. So we're going to choose articles here. That will ensure that when we add a blog post, it will be sent to the same ID. So if it was using a different ID, your blog post wouldn't be displayed inside of this articles list here. So ensure that those two are identical before you do anything else. Okay, the next thing we need to do is just finish up this articles page, because if we preview this currently, you'll see that we just get the all fields and the filter which is displayed here. There's no menu and it's not laid out very nicely like the individual article page. So let's go ahead and fix that before we publish this and add our first post. So we'll go back to Rapid Weaver. What we're going to do is add the site styles partial to the page as that will add the foundation styles and the navigation bar to this page. Let's hide those so we've got a little bit more space. Then we're going to use the foundation stacks to add some nice layout to this page. Okay, the first one we want to use is the two column stack here. And then we're going to add a header on the left hand side and a button on the right hand side. Okay, the header is going to say articles and the button is going to be for creating a new article. So the text is going to be new article and we're gonna set the link to go to that individual article page here. Finally, what we're going to do is set the alignment to be right and we're gonna set rounded corners and we'll leave the rest of the styles for now. Okay, below that, we want another two column foundation stack. So we'll drop that in there and then we're gonna put the blog list into the left hand side. Later on, we're going to be adding the metadata for the articles page to the right hand side. However, we're just going to be adding a post in this video. We'll finish that up later on in the course. What I do want to do is set the column split here to be eight and four again. So eight on the left and four on the right. Now, if we go back and preview that page here, you'll see we now get a nicer layout. Now obviously there are no articles to list and that is because we haven't created one yet. So just before we do that, what I did notice is I wanna add a bit of padding to this two column foundation. So on the row padding here, I'm gonna add five rems to the top. And there we see we get that nicely padded down from the top menu bar here. Okay, now obviously if we click on the new article button, 
we'll, we will be presented with that blog post form that we created on the individual article page. However, we're not going to be able to actually create anything yet. And that is because we need to publish these uh, changes up to the live rapidweaverblog.com website. So to do that, let's go back to Rapidweaver and click the publish button. Once that has been published, we'll go back to Safari. And if we go to the live rapidweaverblog.com website and refresh, you'll see that we now have the not only the home page, but also the articles and article admin pages. Obviously, we're going to remove these from the menu bar later on and add a password protection to these. But if we click on articles now, you'll see that we now get that um, articles page that we created in Rapidweaver. And you'll see we have zero posts. However if, however, if we click the new article button. So here you'll see the blog form that we created in Rapidweaver. What we're going to do is add a test post. So let's put in test post as the title. You'll see the permalink gets automatically generated from the title for us. We can leave it as that for now. Then we need to add a summary and some content and a bit of dummy data just to create our first post basically. So on the desktop, I have an assets folder here. I've got some images and I've also got some copy. So what I'm going to do is open up the paragraph short and just copy that over into the summary. And then for the content, what we can use is the uh, paragraph long, for example. So let's copy that text and paste that into the content area a couple of times. So there, as I say, we've just got some dummy default content that we're going to use for now. Next, what we want to do is perhaps set the author. So I'm going to set that to be Ben. Then I'm going to set or I'm going to leave these as uh, not a draft and not featured. So obviously if it's draft, it's not going to be displayed on our live website. So we want that to happen. To categories, we're going to say, let's call this as dinner for the category. And then the tags, uh, we can just put in a couple of example ones for now. Let's put in burgers and chips. Okay, then we can add some images to the gallery. So we can either click here to upload the images or we can just drag and drop them. So again, from the assets folder, if we take the burgers one, we can just select all of those and drag and drop them into the area here. Those will be uploaded and then all we need to do now is click the save button. And there you can see as everything gets saved, you get this nice green tick so that you know all of the content has been uploaded and saved correctly. Okay, once you've done that, we can then go back to the articles page here and you see that that test post now is displayed in the articles list. And then you know that you have successfully created your first blog post. So I think we've covered enough for this video. What we'll do in the next video is look at displaying this post on our homepage here.